Okay, folks, here we go. Hey, first of all, folks, I'd like to welcome back Jim Hine. It's an honor for Jim to be on today. As yes. you all know, Jim is the man that makes one pin at a time. And he lives here in Tejas, Texas. So, Jim, how have you been? And tell us about your journey, buddy, because you've been off a little bit there. I've been off a lot of it, Larry. I don't um, want to say that. <laughs> so, well, only I could, during a COVID vaccine, contract a staph infection. So round about the beginning of February, end of January, beginning of February, um, I started having some significant knee pain. Uh, and, you know, I was having a real hard time walking about. Went and saw one doctor and they said, oh, it's arthritis, gave me a cortisone shot and sent me on my way. Uh, three, four days later, I was in the ER in so much pain I couldn't move. They took some cultures, didn't really find anything, sent me home. Four more days later, I was back in the ER. They admitted me and found out I had a staph infection growing in my left knee. Dang. 12 hours later, I was in surgery to clean it out, uh, which is the fourth surgery I've had on that knee. And uh, he said it was, it was bad. Um, I was lucky it didn't make it into the bone or into the muscle tissue. Otherwise, it would have been a, a whole nother scenario. So I didn't get out of hospital till like March 6th and spent the next seven weeks on IV antibiotics. I had a pick line running up my arm uh -oh. and you can't really operate a lathe with, with tubing hanging around um, and having that ripped out of your arm would not be a good idea. So I really, I, I didn't turn a pen until about 10 days ago. Wow. So was, was your knee, uh, just a question, uh, although you had the pick in your arm and, uh, and the, uh, the, the drug going in your arm, were you able to stand on that knee or is that, is it healed up enough to where it's not painful? I, I can now, but I've only got about 60 degrees of flex in it. I'm still doing physical therapy. Um, it's still painful at times. Um, the more I use it, the, the sore it gets. Um, we have it under control. I'm able to work. I'm able to move around. I'm able to drive. Um, just all things slower than normal. Slower. So is there a way for them to determine that the staph infection is gone? How do they? Yeah, they've been, I've been getting blood draws twice a week since this all started. Um, and what they're doing is monitoring white cell count and some other infectious markers. Um, and right now I'm on an oral antibiotic. Uh, I think I got eight days left. And that's just a, a precautionary thing to make sure it's all gone. Um, but I'll be following up with all the doctors quite regularly for a little while um, until we're, we're sure it's, it's gone. Okay. But uh, I, I, you know, I, I thought back pain was bad till something happened to my knee. My last surgery on that knee was over 30 years ago. You know, when I was a hell of a lot younger than I am now. <laughs> what do they What do they figure brings that on? I, I know this is, we're we're gonna get talking about pens, but I'm kind of curious because do you think that that operation that you had on the knee that that met, left that a little more vulnerable, or is it? Or did you have well? What one of the things with staff and and you know the infectious disease doc and I talked about this at length because we neither one of us really have a clue as to where it originated from. Um, but anytime you've had surgery on a joint or you have uh, hardware, like if you had a, a, a fusion in your back and you had titanium screws, in this case, I have a, a titanium bolt in my knee holding a ligament together. Um, staph, he called it a sticky bacteria. Mm -hmm. So it likes to stick to areas that have already been traumatized. And that left me has been, you know, next to my back has been through more hell than anything else. So uh, obviously I picked it up somewhere and it found a home in that knee and just started growing. So when you are, when you're turning a pen and Larry, I'm sorry, I'm just jumping in. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. So when you're turning a pen, uh, you're at the lathe because, uh, and forgive me, I've not, I know Larry's been to your shop, watched you do your thing. 
can you sit on a tall stool while you're working or is that do you have to stand uh i've tried the stool thing the problem is with my knee not being able to bend sitting on a stool and have it kind of hanging down doesn't really work mm. um so I, I got some of those anti-fatigue mats and you know tried to cushion it as best we can so uh, when I can bend it, a stool, sometimes I will do that, you know, if I'm in the shop for 12 hours or something like that. Um, hang on one second. Okay. I got to yell at you. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Uh, no, I Lee and me. Natalie aren't home yet, so as soon as they get home, they'll quiet down. But. So, so, Jim. Oh, so they're home. Okay. You're... So uh, you're back working in the shop for what, hour, two hour? What's the deal now? I'm averaging about three hours a day at most. Um, I, I did take some time last weekend and I did some reorganization. So I had more room to move and and kind of do things in the shop. Um, and, and that, God, I spent Sunday with an ice pack on my knee after doing that last Saturday. Um, but I'm up again. I'm still up at, you know, three o'clock in the morning. Um, still up about three o'clock in the morning and uh, uh, work until about six and then getting ready for the day job and, and doing that. So uh, does your day job involve a lot of movement or do you work at a desk or do you work? At a uh, oh, you don't know. I'm a, a director of software engineering. So it's pretty much a desk job and, and dealing with computers and code all day long. So um, I get to put my feet up. I, I get to sit down and, and relax a bit. Um, it's not very stressful. It's not like I'm outside, you know, carrying stuff all day. Right, right. But you're also not getting to move that and exercise that leg either. I, I, no, I think, no. I, it, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. The more, the more I move around, the quicker I heal. Um, and, you know, the more I sit, the more it stiffens up. So it, it's... Sure. I take frequent breaks. Uh, my office is upstairs, and it, it, it had taken me, God, five weeks to be able to make it upstairs once I got wow. home from the hospital. Um, so now I'm forcing myself every day to walk up the stairs and walk down the stairs several times a day. Um, you know, and it, it's therapeutic and, and painful at the same time. But sure. We're, sure. we're getting there. Um, now, I, I will say that, uh, you know, if you've noticed, Larry, um, and Tony, we, we added a bunch of pens to inventory on the website in the last mm -hmm. week or so. Oh, look, yeah. Um, Francisco's cousin Ray is back working for me. Um, so oh, he's cool. been the one that's generated a lot of those pens and really taken some of the burden off. Um, we spent a lot of time coaching him while I've been down uh, and helping him through. And, and he is quite the pen maker now. Cool. Oh, how about that? Cool. That's awesome. That's well, he's really been with you. He's been with you for some time now. Well, he was with me throughout 2018, and then uh, due to some family issues, he he pretty much 2019 and most of 2020 uh, was dealing with that and wasn't working. Um, he came back. I want to say right around September last year. Oh, okay. Maybe August last year. And uh, that one little grizzly, the green lathe, the green and white one that you first saw in Anna, we moved that one over to Francisco's house in Carrollton um, okay. and got him a little shop all set up there. So basically, uh, every couple of weeks, I drop off a bunch of blanks. I pick up what he's finished and give him to Natalie and Elise to polish and, uh, you know, give him his marching orders for the next few weeks. And now that we have pen shows coming up, yay! Yeah, um, we're we're trying to right now really bolster inventory. Wow. Uh, we're doing Triangle first, and then DC, Triangle Miami, then DC, which is all in like a two month period. So right. when we go to Triangle, I'd like to try and take a hundred pens with me. That's the goal. Wow! And and these are pens aside from the ones you're getting orders for, correct? Correct. Wow. Correct. What I'm what the way uh, we're trying to split the workload, um, any of the orders that come in, I'll do. Um, or, you know, we're still trying to I have 
bunches of sketches of things I want to do uh, for new pens and styles. So R&D will be mine as well as the orders. And then we have Ray work on our standard stuff, blue storms, beacons, nebulas, American graffitis, that kind of stuff. So Jim, right now, uh, you, you are taking orders, correct? I am taking orders. I, I've got about a, a eight to 12 week lead time right now. Okay, so that's, that's what we want to uh, make sure I, I am, everybody I, knows. I have the last four pens from when I was out that I'm working on finishing up now. Um, and those folks have been very gracious and very patiently waiting. Um, so we're, we're getting them taken care of. And in the last week or two, we've gotten about five new orders. Okay. Um, so I'll be jumping on those almost immediately. So now when somebody gets in touch with you and they want their own pen created that's not on your website, uh, yeah. don't you require that they pay so much of a deposit down for that? Because, you know, you're going through the time to start making this. Yeah. Um, generally, uh, I like them. I, I'm not going to lie. I like them to pay for the pen in full. Okay. Um, as long as I don't have, like, a three-month lead time. If I'm not, like, a whole quarter away, um, I'll have them do it. If it's something very intricate and I have a long backlog, I'll tell them to hang on. And as soon as that backlog eases up, will get them back in queue. Um, so I, I have a, a little email folder with a bunch of people that have really got some cool ideas that we're waiting for me to get caught up before we tackle them. Okay. Mm. So uh, another question is shipping. Are you shipping outside the US? Yep. Um, in fact, I ship to, uh, in the last say six months, uh, starting right right around Thanksgiving time, we've shipped to Vietnam, we've shipped to Saudi Arabia, we've shipped to New Zealand, uh, and two or three to Mexico. Now, is there... The oh, wait, and my favorite one, and I don't know if she watches you or not, my first customer from Norway. Oh, awesome, awesome. We did a really tiny pen for her. Um, and it came out spectacular. We used the Heimdall resin and she couldn't be happier. She called me a week later and we're working on getting her her second pen. Well, I bet you it's not any nicer than this one. Um, no, that one I'm very proud of. I like that pen a lot. Yeah, this, I named this the, the Paladin. It's what I wanted. Yeah. yeah, in fact, Jim made it at the house while I was there. Oh. I wanted it just like this, and he made it just like I wanted it. And While you were there. Yeah. While you were there. Yeah. You got to watch yeah. him actually make it. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. He, he was hollering at me left and right. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he's yeah. a little like, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Not till I get my pen. So anyway, no, but uh, this is, uh, and this is just a steel nib. Of course, I can get gold nib for it, but this this thing is a baby. This thing is one of the top pins still. It's just a, a great pin. I, I love the color of the clip. I, there's nothing I don't like about it. So, and it better be. Well, if it's not... We, Hello, we, how we, you doing? We, Tony Little Sonny. That's a little Tony. Little Bambino. Hey. Little Bambino. Hey, little Bambino. <laughs> Take care of Papa Son. Take care of the That's Papa. Right. Oh, he's the best, isn't he? He's anyway, best. sorry about that. Oh, you're not either. Get out of here. So anyway, so, uh, but anyway, yeah, this is the Paladin. Uh, you know, after I saw this pen, you know, I love the Paladin, the, sh the series Paladin. And right there, that's when I named it Paladin. Perfect. Nice. Mwah. Oh, nice. Oh, but nice. anyway, back to this pen. So now this pen was made of ebonite, right? Remember? Yes. Yep, Japanese you like ebonite. that, Tony. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, I, that's fabulous. Japanese ebonite, you say. Uh, how is that different than other ebonite, or is it? You know, I, if you ask five makers, you'll probably get five different opinions. Well, maybe three different opinions. Um, you know, I've worked with Indian ebonite, which is 
I, I refer to it as not very refined. Um, anytime you machine ebonite, you get a sulfury kind of smell. It's the nature of the beast. It's vulcanized rubber. Um, German ebonite, little cleaner, cuts a little better, doesn't quite smell as much. Japanese ebonite cuts beautifully, polishes beautifully, very little smell while you're machining it. Um, I, I, and I, part of that is I order from one manufacturer over there, Nico Ebonite. He's always in the LA, out at the LA show. Um, and he's done a couple custom Ebonite colors for me too. It's just, he's easy to deal with. He's got a consistent high quality product and it's a joy to work with. So uh, me, Ebonite, oh, well, go ahead, Larry. Uh, let me jump a little bit here because I've, I've been dying to ask this question. I saw yeah. your pen. Of course, I already voted. I saw your pen. Damn, dude. Where did that come from? Well, you've seen the Avancio. You know that, that blue pen we made at yeah. the shop yeah. for you? That's an Avancio. You that have one now? That's an Avancio. Yeah. But the particular colored pen that's there, there it is, is there it our... Is. Yep. So it's modeled off the old Deltas. It's got a 16 millimeter barrel, an 18 millimeter cap, and a, a 14.8 millimeter section. It's just, if you got trouble or arthritis with your fingers, it's easy to grip. You're yeah. not having to sneak down on it. It's just really comfortable. Yeah. Um, and it posts really deep. So, you know, if you write post it, it doesn't extend the length so it gets top heavy. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this pen as well, uh, Jim made it at the shop when I was there. It's just that I can't go over his house without him making the pen. I'll have a fit. And, you know, for me to shut up, Jim will say, okay, I'll make it right now. Just shut up. <laughs> that, you know, uh, I'm glad that you make that, uh, Jim, because uh, the, the problem, the, the, people always ask me, why don't you like vintage pens? And I, and there's I have nothing against vintage pens, oh. obviously. My, I think they're wonderful. They're around. They're, they've been around hundreds of years for yeah. a reason. They're really good pens, but most of the most of them are small. Are very small. Yep. And I've got I've got the big old meat hooks. And uh, and oh, so I'm right there with you. Yeah. So when I ever I, I look at a pen, you know, I've got a couple pens that I bought that uh, like a Waterman Hemisphere. It's like a skinny little pen, and they write yeah. well, but it's uncomfortable to write with. So. You know, something like that, Avancio uh, would be would be really a nice pen to, to, to have for someone with big hands, not just the yeah, arthritis. And, and, and actually, the story behind that is uh, there's a gentleman up in Canada uh, by the name of Ryan Avancio. I believe it's Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2018, he had seen one of Larry's interviews, and we had talked about it, and basically, he, he designed the pen. Be darn. And I asked him if I could call or name it after him. Um, and he's like, sure, no problem with that. And, and that's how the Avant Seal was born. Um, at the time, uh, I, I didn't know much about the old Deltas. So I didn't know I was making essentially an homage to, to the old Delta um, until I got to handle a few of them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we, we've tweaked it a little bit here and there through the years. And uh, the one that was nominated uh, is basically, if you look on the website, it's our Heimdall model. It's a custom diamond cast resin. It's black and bronze and silver and a little gold in there that in the sunlight, it's, oh, my goodness. It's, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Pen. gorgeous pen. Gorgeous pen. It's just, wow. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't use the best picture of it, but I won't hold that against them. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you've got, in the same line, Tony, you've got our Serpiente series. Mm -hmm. If you look, it's the uh, Juma with the snakeskin patterns and the colors. Oh, same, yes. Same yes. platform. Um, but, you know, me and color, Heinz pens and bright colors have always been a deal. Yep. So we've got purple and fuchsia and green and turquoise and dark blue. And then we match the clip and nib colors. So they're very, very cool. That's awesome. I remember I remember Larry showing me, uh, he said, I'm going to have Jim make me a pen, but I'm choosing the colors. And he got crayons, if I'm not mistaken. And you made some colors with your crayons and said, 
I'm going to get Jim to make my, my pens with this color. Am I right? You recall yeah, yeah, that? He made, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's been a while, but yeah, he made it. Yeah. Yep. It's just, so, getting, him, it's just getting him to do it. Well, like he said, Larry, he's, you know what, three, three you said uh, three weeks, no, three months, uh, yeah, eight four, weeks, four. eight weeks, yeah, four to eight weeks. Yeah, about, about, yeah, eight to 12 weeks roughly right 12. now. I'm, I'm really kind of at the outset. However, um, I think in the next two to three weeks, I'll be able to shorten that by half. Right. Um, I'm really starting to get a good head of steam going. Good, good. That's awesome. So, because I got a feeling that a lot of people are going to be ordering pins from you. We're getting into that, especially when it comes around to the uh, the shows uh, opening yeah. up. And people get around and they see your table. Maybe there's something on your table they're not interested in, but they've got an idea. I want one of those, but in this color or with something else. And and all of a sudden now you're getting backlog. Has that happened at shows, uh, Jim? Do you get a lot oh, of people? Yeah, I've, I've, I've walked away from shows with five, six orders. Um, and none of them were things that I do normally. Um, you know, people walk around and like at DC, we're, you're going to see in, in – you've been to DC, right? I've not, I've not been to DC. Um, I've been to LA. There's two, there's two rooms in DC. There's the main ballroom and then the smaller room off to the side. I think they're going to put – I've been talking to them quite a bit in the last few days. All the custom makers are going to go into that room. Oh, great. So there's going to be six or seven of us all kind of grouped together. And uh, what, you, what I find is I'd rather be near the custom makers. I'm friends with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we know each other's work. And we share customers, but we don't steal customers. Because, you know, and I've said this before, if you take a pen from Herbert or in Brooks and Newton and me, and a couple other guys, and you put them on a table, um, all of us could point and tell you who's the suits. Right. Everybody's got their own style. style. And within that, collectors and, and enthusiasts, they like things about Sean's pens, but they also like things about my pens. And at the end of the day, they both go home with, they go home with one each. Yeah. Fabulous. Or they'll see a color that Sean does and a model I want. And they're like, oh, can you do this? And, you know, hey, Sean, can I bum a, a piece of that material off of you? And, you know, so, back and forth. But I want to point out to people watching this video and you go to the pin shows and you see Jim Hines on, um, out there. And uh, so you go look at his table. And if he doesn't have anything that uh, catches your fancy, the good thing about Jim Hines is, you tell him what you want, and he'll create that pin for you. So you have mm -hmm. uh, uh, an advantage here. You can buy whatever Jim has on the table mm -hmm. or have him make a pin the way you want it made or a double whammy is buy what you like on the table, then have a custom pin the way you want right. it. Right, right. And, and we have people do that quite a bit, actually. Yeah. I've got a question for you, Jim. Sure. Uh, is it possible because now you work primarily with resins, correct? Uh, I work with resins. I work with hybrids. I work with wood. I work with ebonite. Yeah. Because yeah. I was one kind of run the gamut. Because mm -hmm. I was wondering, I know that sometimes uh, that people will put brass inserts to weight, to add weight to a resin pen. Or is that true? Yeah, yeah that's true. You can uh, brass that, or bronze. Brass or bronze. Can, is that something you can do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, I primarily work on a metal lathe these days. When I first started, um, I, I started like a lot of custom pen makers. I only had a wood lathe, and, and I, I kind of did everything that way. Um, you lose a little consistency. I, I'm much more consistent from pen to pen now uh, than I was before. But working with a metal lathe, I get to do things like I make my own cap rings or body rings. Um, you know, I still hate making clips, but I, I tend to be doing it a lot lately. Um, you know, so weighting down a pen, heck, you could make a, a brass stainless steel or bronze insert that the section resin goes over, you mm -hmm. thread, you thread the metal to screw in where the section would normally be resin and you add oh probably 10 grams to a pen 
Yeah, I, I I tend to like weighty pens. I don't know about there's. I imagine there's people all over the gamut. They like light pens, heavy pens, and such. I've always preferred to have a heavy pen. I uh, let the yep. I just kind of guide the guide the weight instead of having you know because you're not pushing down with a fountain pen. Uh, yeah. So that's really nice to know. I can't wait to spread this word with everybody else. All those, uh, I don't think you're going to have any problem getting orders, but we're going to try to drown you, aren't we, Larry? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, well, you know, being too busy is, is you know, there are worse problems to have. True. But, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I got to say this, I was I was incredibly overwhelmed with one getting that Reader's Choice nomination. I, I, you know, I've been doing this going on almost five years, five, six years now. Mm hmm. And, you know, it was always a dream to advertise in Penn World, right? So, hey, I, I finally started advertising in Penn World in the back of the magazine, the little squares. You know, now we've graduated. We've grown. We got a third-page ad that we've been running nowadays. Awesome. Awesome. Um, you know, now all of a sudden I get noticed, and, and I'm up with Ryan Crusat, Jonathan Brooks, and, and, you know, as Rear's Choice. Come on. That's, that's I tell you, beautiful. I, I, uh, Larry will tell you, I've, I've, I've got a lot of manufactured pens from big companies. I've got them all. And I, you know, I, I never had had a pen made for me. And I went to my very first pen made by a, a man, was, you know, sole manufacturer like yourself, uh, was mm -hmm. a guy named Eric Sand. I know Eric. Yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah. And I got one made and, you know, I think a lot of people that buy fountain pens from uh, from the vendors that are out there, Goulet and the Andersons and all of that, they buy the, the standard models that come out from different manufacturers. They don't know about private makers like yourself, like custom makers. And uh, I think it's uh, is so important to know that when you get a pen from someone like you, uh, you know, someone like Eric and someone like, like Ryan, I've got a couple of Ryan's pens. Uh, I've got one. It just, there's something special that you know that you had your hands on that thing. And it, it wasn't just put on a machine in a CDC, what do they call those machines? And just, C CNC. Yeah. CNC machines uh, that they're just, they're just ma mass manufactured. It's, it means a lot to know. And I think Larry feels the same way. That's why he's very passionate about your, your product. You know, I, I think the pandemic, um, the last 18, we're going on what, 18 months now almost? Yeah. Um, has really, I think, illuminated people out there to custom makers. Um, I know a lot of industries have seen a, a dip in sales, uh, put some people out of business, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we last year had our best year ever, and we only did one pen show. Wow. We, we got into Philly in January before all this hit. Right. And and we ended up, uh, I think, 30% over 2019. My and God. all we did was some Instagram advertising, you know? Um, so it, it's, it's been really wonderful. I know a lot of the other makers out there are, are experiencing similar results. Mm -hmm. So when is going to be your first pin show to go back to? Uh, Triangle, June 13th through 5th, or yeah, 13th through 15th in North Carolina. Um, so that's that's coming up in a few months. Uh, Elise, Francisco, and I will be out there. There'll be uh, a couple custom makers there. River City Pens will be there. Um, uh, uh, Hardy Penwrights will be there. Uh, of course, Ryan will be there. And I, I think there's one or two more that will be out there. That uh, I, I was going to say, uh, I think I met you down in, in St. Louis at the St. Louis show a couple years ago. Yep. yep. And, uh, yeah, I was very impressed. Uh, you and, and Francisco was there at the table. And I'm surprised, Larry, you didn't make it up for that one. But uh, it was a great show. They did a great job. They're going to do it virtually, I believe, this June. I don't know if they They are. Out and – Believe it or not, uh, Elise, who has been doing a lot of my resin pouring, um, she's going to be doing a resin demo uh, as part of that virtual event. And my daughter, uh, they ask her every year to teach a bullet journaling class up there. Mm -hmm. So she's going to do that virtually here. 
Isn't that wonderful? I, you know, I know that Anne. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm. She's on a lot of our zooms in the Kansas City. I'm in Kansas City, by the way, and and so, you know, we okay. have a we have a local meetup group up here, and, and whenever we do, the St. Louis folks jump on the Zoom, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. Anne, uh, the one that puts that uh, event on in St. Louis. I, I know they really wanted to get that show this year. They wanted to, but then they couldn't. It's a lot of expense if it if it falls through. Yeah, yeah, and and they really, you know, I, I we've done St. Louis a couple of years now, and I I join their Zoom hangouts and their Zoom meetups quite right. often, um, right. and they've had me on as well. Anne and and the crew are just absolutely wonderful. Um, in fact, some of my biggest customers are from the St. Louis area, yeah. um, but she always goes above and beyond. It's one yep. of the, the most well-run shows I've ever been to. Um, and yeah, if she would have put the money into it and all of a sudden something turned south and they couldn't hold it, it, it would have been devastating. I, I don't know that they would have recovered from it. Sure. So I, I think for them, it was the right move at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a deadline where they had to commit or not commit. Right. And, and, I, and I think a lot of people don't understand that the people that run these shows, they're not making money. Most of them aren't making money from the shows. No. No, they're not money makers. They are break evens at best. Um, and, you know, of course, they'll, they'll get some gifts from the vendors and whatnot, but it, it's nobody's getting rich off of running a pen show. Right. I, I've run big events in the past, and, and I can tell you firsthand they're not money makers, and they'll make you glad they're only once a year. Are you going to be at the Dallas Pen Show this year? I've sent in my form. I haven't heard <laughs> yay or nay, but I've sent them a check and everything else. So I'm, we're planning on it. Yes. Awesome. Okay. awesome. In fact, I've asked for two tables in Dallas. Oh, okay. That's awesome. We're going to have two tables in DC too. Okay, folks. So you're hearing it. He's going to be at the Dallas Pink Show, God willing. Yep. Be here in Dallas. We'll be. Uh, so here's the schedule right now as it stands. Uh, Triangle in June, Miami in July, D.C. in August, Dallas in September, um, Colorado. Oh, no, Chicago's next in October, then Colorado, and I'm trying to get into Ohio to finish the year off. We haven't heard anything about Detroit yet or not, but if Detroit goes off, we'll probably attend Detroit as well. So mostly the east of the Mississippi, most of them are in Missouri. And uh, are you getting out west to the L.A.? Oh, the L.A. show is in February, so it's already. Yeah, well, the L.A. show is, I, I've been to the L.A. show as a, a participant, not as a vendor, but as a, a, a walking through. It's not really custom maker friendly. It's a vintage and part show. And. No offense, it's it's jammed into a tiny little hotel. There's very little distance between the aisles. There's oh, man. theft left and right, and it's it, it's just not a pleasant experience. Were um, you were you there? At, were you there? Maybe it was in 2019. Maybe uh, you know, no, I was there in 18. I was okay, there whatever. I was I went there one time. I didn't go there for the show. I went out there for work. I sell. I sell tents for a living and we had the mm -hmm. rental show out there in, L in LA and I, well, it just happened to be on that weekend. So I got off the airplane and went straight to the LA pen show. And I thought, Oh, I've been, I've heard all the, all the, you know, hoopla. I get there and I had my, my, you know, bag, my roller bag and I get there and there's a line out the door to get in. Cause they only do it on what you only have one day. I think it is. Cause there are two days yep. maybe. And, uh, and I finally, it's a, get one, there. it's a one day show when you bring it right. Saturday. Right. And so I, I get off the, I get in there and I couldn't believe it. It was so like you, exactly like you explained. It was so, it was so disappointing only because it was so close. I mean, there's no room to walk. It was, it was packed in like sardines. It was hot. And uh, yeah, there was no, no, you couldn't really spend time with a, uh, the person like we, you did in St. Louis where you have space and you can talk to them and uh, room to move. Uh, yeah, and, and by the way, St. Louis, they're, they're not, they are only a few tables smaller than D.C. 
Oh, say. I know. I, I know they are. In fact, uh, we had planned on getting two tables for St. Louis uh, mm-hmm. last year and this year. So as soon as St. Louis opens up, we're, we're going to have a nice little corner to ourselves. Perfect. I've already been talking to Ann about it. And we are very, we're really looking forward to St. Louis. I wasn't kidding when I say I have a, I know I have a lot of fans here in Dallas. I have a lot of fans in St. Louis. The whole Slap Me Pen Club. Um, right. All of them are multiple t- purchasers. So yeah, and you'll get a bunch from Kansas City. We'll get you up there on our Zoom next time. I'll get you invited. Oh, absolutely, I'd be happy to. So just crash it. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Oh, I show up uninvited everywhere. Come on. Yeah, but your biggest, <laughs> but your biggest uh, cheerleader is right up in that corner right there, Mister Mister. Oh, I, I, you know, he, he since day one. Ever since I sent him an email and asked if he'd review one of my pens and he found out I was a local maker, that was the end of story. End of story. It was all over. Yep. <laughs> it's been a, a lot of fun, good. though. Yeah. You know, I've Although, seen- Larry, we do need to have you come up to the shop. You haven't seen the new place yet. We need to have you out and, of course, make you a pen. <laughs> hey, that's worth a trip to say. It's worth the trip to Dallas for me. Fort Worth. <laughs> there you go. Come on. Yeah, we're going to plan on being there probably sometime December when you I got to see your schedule first. Because I'm, yeah, um, I'm going to do- get it posted. I'll get it posted on the website. Um, we're trying to do a little more at the website. We're revamping it. Um, you're going to see a new, new look and feel to it coming up. And, uh, oh, we just added a new and exciting feature. Um, that that people might uh, appreciate. There's an option now with in collaboration with Affinity. If you buy a pen, you can split it into four equal payments over four months. Yeah, that's I've seen good that good offered credit. on some other. Yeah, yeah. good credit. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know how that no, works. I don't think, I don't think no, credit. No. Yeah, there's no fees. No. They, they take an extra percent or two um, uh, off of the sale. Mm-hmm. So we use Shopify for the website. They take their merchant fee like any normal credit card processor. If you do it through Infinity, they add a percent and a half, and that's where they make their money. But it, it doesn't delay me getting paid, and right. it lets you have some breathing room. Whatever right. card you use to, to do, they'll – Say you buy something for 220 bucks, they'll split it into like 68 and change, and they'll charge you for the next four months. Yeah, that's cool. That's a great that's a great plan because a lot of people don't have that money all up, up front, and it allows them to get a pen that they really want. And and in fact, it's really nice because it might take you if they're if you're making one, it might take you two or three months to get yeah. it ready. Yeah. Yeah. And this way, you get paid up front, and they get a chance by the time they pay the last one, you're sending the exactly. pen. Exactly. Yeah, I hadn't actually thought about that. That's 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 a good point, Tommy. Thank you. No, pe- people have asked me uh, through email when we talked about Heinz pens, and they say, Larry, can Jim Heinz really make any pen? Can he can he copy them really? Said, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I, I have some limits. Like you know those old little skinny Parkers. Yeah. They, you know, they're made out of, you know, ebonite or celluloid, and they just got some threads on them. The section will push in and seal with shellac. That's a little small. I don't know that I could pull that off. But within reason, and and I have had people over time say, hey, can you make me an Edison Premier, but with one of your resins? And you, I, I had one gentleman from India ask if I could make him an Aboya, yeah, it begins with a K. It's a, a really fat, long pen, and it's got some knurling on it. Gorgeous pen. Um, we did that. He also asked me to make a Quaco Sport 30% bigger. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and, and out of blue ebonite, and we, we did that, too. Oh you, 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 can make, you can make the Deltas. That's not a problem. You can make the Deltas. You can make the Cochrane All-Americans. Uh, you, you can make the Mont Blanc 149 shape, all that kind of stuff. We, we can do all those shapes. Now, I, I will do it, but begrudgingly. I don't like copying or mimicking other people's work. Right, right. Um, now, granted, there's only so many shapes you can do with a pen. But, you know, I, I frown on somebody saying, hey, can you come make, can you, can you make me a, 
on Mount Blanc 149. You know, yeah, I can put a band on there and, and make the shape, but, you know, uh, it's... I, I don't get me wrong. I'm not frowning on it. Just right. Pop, I don't want to mimic stuff. Right. right. Well, he, I, he, he'll make the pen, but it's not going to have the uh, little uh, Mont Blanc emblem on top. No, no. It's gonna, he can make oh, the there, be, pen. Yeah, it's going to be there'll be subtle there. differences. Yeah, there'll be subtle differences. Yeah. And and really, what I prefer is if if somebody has a pen they really really like. Okay, so. One of the ones I get is the the platinum three seventy seven 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 six yeah it's three seven seven six people love that pen and and you know that's one of the common asks can you do something around that size similar yeah. shape yeah. um and and I, I'd rather do something inspired by a favorite pen than mm -hmm. an exact replica I've got a question for you Jim uh, mm -hmm. not copying a pen but one of my favorite things about pens. And I, mm -hmm. Larry knows this. I love overlays. And stuff. I like, I like some texture to a pen, not just smooth sometimes. So this is a pen from a private maker. You might recognize it if you can see this pen real close. It's got yeah. grooves in yeah. it. Yeah. It's made by you. a guy named uh, Will Hodges. Yeah. Uh, from Tactile Turn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him. I've not met him, but I'm familiar with his work. Okay. So basically, this has it's just basically grooved. The whole pen is grooved that that uh, with the I don't know how they do it, but it's it's actually ribbed, ridged the whole way to the even the barrel. Yeah, that's yeah, it's well, guilloche. Remember, Jim, kind of guilloche, yeah, kind of guilloche, but it's it's definitely a pattern with it. You can see that. Right. You see that? Oh, I see it there. I see it yeah. there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you remember or not, but when you were in Dallas that last time you were there, Will was to the right of you. Uh, just almost next to you, right in the corner. He was in the corner where yeah. I was behind the window. Yeah, yeah. And then and in L.A., he was. He, they stuck him in the worst possible spot in L.A. I felt so bad for him. And uh, when I went up to him, and he's not offering these fountain pens anymore. I'm not that. I mean, he'll yeah, make why? one for. But my, I don't know. He's doing a lot of uh, you know rollers and ballpoints with yeah. the click. But my question to you, Jim. Not I wasn't trying to promote uh, to Will, but. What I'm saying is, oh, no, can you make, is it possible to make a uh, a resin pen where you have some sort of a uh, textured outside of it? Uh, and I don't know if that's possible or not. I mean, maybe that Yeah, would we can. There's there's things we can do. Um, you know, uh, what he's got there are basically mm -hmm. circles cut and even lengths throughout the barrel. Yeah. Uh, we can certainly do something similar to that. We can add knurling um, to mm -hmm. it, which is... is I don't know that I do it through the whole body, but right. in sections where you're going to grip, right. um, we can flute it. Oh, you know, like, the, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that gives you a little different look. We can do, you know, six sides, eight sides, 12 sides. Like a facet, a, a facet. Yeah. Faceted oh. pen. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Man. You, know, you could do facets or you could do flutes like on columns. Right. You know, right. that would work well. Um, like that, like the, could, like the, uh, like the di uh, diplomat arrow, similar that flute. Yeah, that. similar to that. Um, we could also run essentially a helix through the length. It'd be like almost, uh, yeah. it'd be a thread, if you right. will, just not engaged anything. But you could run a helix through. Sure. So well, Jim, uh, are you still uh, on your nibs? You're doing the Jovo nibs and the Bach nibs, right? Yep, we're doing both. And the Bach nibs is a little more expensive, right? The hundred and twenty. They are a little bit more expensive. Um, however, I got good news, and and that's the box steel nibs are getting better. Good. I uh, we're there's a, a gentleman, uh, another nibmeister, uh, Pen Realm. Are you familiar with them? Mm, I'm not. Uh, small small nibmeister. He does a lot of work here with Drum Ghouls in Houston. Uh, he's based in Colorado, but flies around. Um, he's working on becoming uh, a box supplier here. And a lot of us custom makers, there's about eight of us that have gotten behind him. And he's got his first order of several thousand nibs coming in, wow. of, of which I've got like 10 or 12 Bach 8, number 8 titaniums coming um, and a whole bunch more stuff. So uh, 
I'm embracing Bach more. They, they've really upped their game, especially with their steel nibs. Uh, they've improved their quality control. So I don't frown on it as much. Um, and, and of course, uh, you know, we did that, that, uh, collaboration with, uh, uh, Chicago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's one of the macaws that we did. He does that birds of the world series. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. they're they're big in the Bach nibs, so you know we we worked with them there, and uh, we very well may be doing another bird for them coming up here this year. That's that's a gorgeous pen that you just saw. Uh, what would you be putting that number eight titanium nib in? Agavancio. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. I was it, gonna it say. works. It works best in that platform, and um, uh, the gentleman Larry you had on from Magna Carter. Yeah, a couple Heron. months back, Heron. Heron, yeah, been talking to him. He's uh, uh, they're coming out supposedly with a, a number eight steel nib, right? Yeah, he said it will be much more affordable. Yeah. I've not seen it yet, um, but I'm looking forward to it. It looks nice to me. Yeah, I've already seen it. Yeah, I've seen pictures, I just haven't gotten one yeah. in my hands yet. Uh, and Heron does about three. Three to four, three to five thousand nibs per day, putting that many out. And he has two places, one in Mumbai. Is that yes. how yeah, the nib shops is in Mumbai, and there's five of them working there. Then he has yep. the factory at that other place, what's it called? I don't remember the it's, other one. I can't pronounce the name at a different area, which is further away than where he's at, so. But, the, but they're in lockdown, Larry. They're yeah. in lockdown right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. India's yeah. India's got some big problems at the moment. Yeah, I so. talked to him this morning. I talked to him almost every day, so. Uh, well, I need to get back to him because, uh, uh, where is it here? You know, they're doing those ebonite feeds, right? Right, right. They're doing Yovo compatible ebonite feeds and we had gotten one of the first ones that they came out with. Yeah. Yeah. And before I got sick, we were in talks and, and I was looking to, to buy a bunch of these. Yeah. Um, because one, the feed's quite a bit wetter. <laughs> um, and two, we we're having all those issues with Yovo housings cracking early on. Um, and until we got that resolved, I was trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do. I really didn't want to switch to solely Bach nibs. Yovo wasn't acknowledging the problem. In fact, even working with FP nibs um, yeah, last man. fall, uh, Yovo only came out a month ago and acknowledged the problem and pretended like, oh, this is the first we're hearing of it. The American makers bringing it to our attention. It's a crock. Yeah, I'm not really happy with them right now, but they still make the better nib. So Heron's also going to be coming out soon with a titanium nib as well. Is all yep, I've seen that. I I've seen his videos on that, and I'm I'm actually kind of excited about that. the The nib that you saw in that unit is one of his steel nibs. Right. And I'm I'm surprisingly it's it's writes really well. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I love their pens. I love their nibs. Uh, yeah. So, what What about the price differential on this titanium? I, I don't even own a titanium nib. I've tried one, and I thought it was really nice. <clears throat> it's It's about a. I think it's a hundred and five dollar upgrade for a number eight. Um, I've got a bunch of number sixes. I don't have it as an option on the website. Um, they They kind of dropped off in popularity, but I think it's a forty dollar upgrade mm -hmm. uh, for a number six. And uh, about the same for number five. See, that's what I wouldn't want. I want to get one of those babies on my pen. Number eight, tight, titanium baby. If and I feed, let's rock it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm to make me one. <laughs> now, I, I do, I, I will tell you a secret. You know, Yovo stopped making their gold number eight. Okay. Uh, last, last year. I've got a couple stashed away here. I've got a medium and a fine. So those are going to go on something special here in the future. So uh, wh where are you getting your gold nibs from? Spain still? Uh, most of my nibs come from Spain. Um, I, I, you know, 
Pablo has always done right by me. He's always uh, uh, taken my crazy requests and, oh, I got to have this tomorrow. And he's always pulled it off. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of loyal that way. Even if he were to double his prices, I'd still probably buy from him just because of the service and the relationship I've built with him over the years. Um, and he was the guy that, that actually led me in the direction of the colored nibs. If you remember, when we first came out with them, uh, we were getting them from Pablo. And, uh, yep, that's, one of the, that's the new one I plated for you. And his plating, he used a different product than what I can get here in the States. Um, and he was, the, the product was prone to peeling, like on your green one, if you recall, Larry. Yep. Um, and there were certain inks that really caused problems with it, like noodlers. Everybody's, it, it's just a very alkaline ink. And it kind of ate away at that plating. What, what we've been using plating them here, um, I've had a, a turquoise nib soaking in, in noodlers turquoise ink for, oh, what are guys, five, six days, and the plating's held up to it. Awesome. So, uh, you know, and, and we've been selling them what? We've sold almost 70 nibs last year that were plated, not counting the 20 for St. Louis and not counting the 20 for Chicago Pen, which were all plated. Um, and I don't think I've had a single one come back for a replate or a plating issue. So knock on wood, I don't want to jinx me, um, but I, I really think we've got a plating solution that'll hold up to time. So Jim, uh, right now, what is the hottest pin selling for you right now? You're, you're gonna laugh, uh, it's one of two pens. It's the Nebula, the blue and orange, that pen is outsold, the Cyprium, the Beacon, the Blue Storm. That's the number one pen, which I'm still amazed to this day. Wow. The second one is uh, Elise's Magical Mermaid, which wow. is uh, uh, kind of like white pearlescent and uh, what I call an interference purple. Okay. Those are probably the two hottest. And then any of the Avancios right after that. The big mm -hmm. pens are, are really making a comeback. And you can see you've got a lot of individual makers now making bigger pens, 15 right. millimeters, 16 right. millimeters. You've got uh, William Shakur. I don't know if you know who he is over in, uh, in, in India or in England, I think. And he's making a big, it's called the Titan. 3D, but it's 3D. I, I've seen it. I didn't know who did it, but I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's a 3D printed one, though. That's not a turned pen. It's Ooh. a uh, 3D printed. Uh, who also does that? The guy that does the Jerry, clear Jerry from, uh, from, uh, additive, additive, additive pens, Jerry. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's an interesting process. Uh, you know, I, I it's still weird. I got, you know, I was at the St. Louis show, and, and Jerry got me last minute the last day and he got me to he, he he's a salesman you know i wasn't gonna buy one i can't oh, he is i <laughs> and i and i was i was at his table and he says oh you better buy it now because it's the last one and i'm i'm gonna be out of them and you're not gonna be able to buy it anymore i said well all right I'll, I'll wrap it up and i remember with regret and re and remorse i'm walking to my i get to my room i'm thinking why did i just buy this pen i this is nothing like i want and i really didn't i what i didn't care for it i didn't like it I got home, I inked the damn thing up, and I, writes great. Well, it's a Yovo nib. I mean, it writes great, yeah. and it actually is not a bad it, – It's a. I like the pen now. It's a great concept. I, I yeah. like the helix on the inside. It's it's something new and different. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've got a 3D printer here, and actually what I end up doing is I, I print stuff for the shop. I right. printed some gears for my lathe. I <laughs> You know, I, I've, I've done that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't know that I'd ever 3D print something and put it on one of my well, pens. One of the things he does do, he, he makes, he 3D, he 3D prints parts that are needed for pens as well. Uh, I, I know he's done that uh, uh, before as well, but 
Yeah, no, and I know he does some uh, some three D printing for ink wells and some other ink uh, pen pen holders and and such. Yeah. So, and that kind of stuff is it, that's a great use for it. Yeah, um, I've seen some people three D print like piston filler to integrate in the pens. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily do that. Nothing. Nothing against it. Like I said, I love that that clear helix in there and and watching the ink kind of spiral through. Yeah, that's um, that's the that's the I don't want to call it the gimmick, but that's the the that. Well, no, that's the attraction of that pen. I mean, yeah. you you can get a demonstrator anywhere, right? Right. You know, hell, I you know I can give you a demonstrator. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You know, I I got my my. One of my favorite pens, the Sailor 1911 Large Anniversary Demonstrator wow. that I got from Lisa out in Washington. Thank you, Lisa. Wow. I know she'll watch this. So, hi, Lisa. Oh, I'm Lisa. Hi. Uh, Larry, in case you didn't see it, remember the pink thing we made for uh, um, Carol? 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 Yeah. Wow. That is pretty. That is new pretty. color for the nibs. Say, uh, you still have the go nibs you're putting on pins, right? Well, yeah, of okay. course. Okay. I'm I've got a gold. I've got a gold number five sitting here that's going to go on your pocket pen that you wanted out of the Americana slate blue resin. Whatever. You, you're still. You're still on my list. Yeah. He gets to me at the. In the end of the century, he'll get to me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's not fair, hey, Larry. Hey, Larry, he, you know why he's doing that? He just wants ain't you... got no money, hell. That's why no, 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 no. He's doing that because he wants you to be around for a long time. He doesn't want you going anywhere. He wants you to stay healthy, try to get healthy and stay around for a long time. And oh, then he'll get exactly. you that pen. If I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm not going nowhere. No, you you yeah, gotta, but I'm giving you something to live for, man. There it is. There it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now he's blowing smoke. <laughs> oh boy. He'll hell. He'll celebrate when I die. Yay! <laughs> uh, no, no way. No way. No, 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 no. So, okay, Jim. Is there anything else before we close up that you want to like to mention to the folks? Um. Man, I think we've kind of covered the gamut. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just I'm I'm back. I'm working. Uh, I'm working not at full speed, but we're we're making it through. We're getting ready to get back on the road for the pen shows. We're all excited about that. Um, we've got some some new pens coming up this year. Uh, we we've got our first ink that we're going to release with the pen coming shortly. Um, we had planned on releasing it earlier this year, but, you know, circumstance. Um, and we're, we're probably going to do a second ink here as well. Oh, I do have something I do want to mention. Are either one of you two Flex Nib fans? Not, not really. Not me. I, I no. do a dip pen. I, I write a lot of uh, Spencerian, but I use with, you know, bleak holder. So, and I know some of Larry's fans are, mm -hmm. um, Pablo out in Spain has released a new Yovo number no. six ultra flex. I've got eight of them here. We're going to be doing a, a limited run of pens around that nib. He's got a number five coming out very shortly that he describes as writing with a wet noodle. Wow. So we're gonna we're gonna jump on those when he has them coming out soon. So we've got some interesting stuff coming up. We're we're trying to make sure we have enough variety for everybody. Um, you know, I, I'd like to think that that we have something that almost anybody would want to get their hands on. Well, That's you know, one thing, even if you don't, and they want something special, but who you are. Well, are. yeah, we, we can we can craft it, yeah. and if it's cool enough, like the Avancio, it might get added to the standard model line. Yeah, know? yeah. So they call it the, the, it'll be the next one will be the Baroness. Yeah, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> well, I've I've already got Larry's sketches for it, so oh, okay. it's, it's already been discussed. But he will only. Although it's not called the Baroness. 
when I die, then we'll put it out. He'll say the good riddance pen. No, oh, stop man. that, Larry. Stop it. <laughs> so look, folks. Okay, so uh, I want everybody to know that uh, we'll be doing another Zoom with Jim in about a week or two. So that way everybody can come on and be able to talk to Jim, ask Jim questions. And uh, if you want to order something, I guess that'll be up to the man right here. So be expecting that to come very soon. Cool, Jim? Look forward to it. Hey, oh, it's going to be happy. I, I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of this, uh, Larry and Jim. It's been it's been great in education and informative. And, uh, you know, I can't wait till we get a chance to get back all together and uh, see each other at a show and have some fun. Yeah, it's it's going to be nice. So uh, I'm looking forward to it later this year. So hopefully we'll get you out to a show too. And awesome. as soon as you're able, you need to come to Fort Worth and we can do lunch or something. Get drunk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Well, I don't drink, but I don't. Okay. I'm not saying drink. You know, I'll give you Diet Dr. Pepper or some Diet Coke or something. Water. Oh, fun. The only thing I drink. Oh, there, you Pepsi, there you go. Don't, don't even drink water. Oh, it's you're like Jake. Oh, my God, you two. I hate to see your kidneys when y'all die. Oh, what do you uh, think? First ingredient in Pepsi is ultra purified water. I get plenty. That's right. Well, that's the way I always tell my kids. They say, you don't drink enough water. It's, that's what makes my coffee. Yeah, exactly. You get plenty. I get plenty. I got to have my vanilla latte. Every morning, seriously, religion. <laughs> I don't care if I'm feeling sick or not. I gotta crawl over there to get it, oh. <laughs> and I'm okay. All right, I'm gonna cut it off now. Hey, Jim, it's been an honor, my man. Honor. Oh, it's pleasure's all mine, Larry. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> You've <laughs> always been my biggest fan, and and I sincerely appreciate you. Man, you make some awesome pins for real. I'm not just pulling chains, but you know. I've seen you grow and grow and grow, and you're still growing. And, you know, we talked about that, if you remember, and you're there. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're knocking on doors now. Now people are going to start seeing you, but you yeah. busted butt to get there. Uh, it's It's been a long haul, and there have been a lot of people that have been instrumental in it. You, uh, I couldn't do this without Francisco. I couldn't do this uh, without Elise. Um, you know, Ray and all the, the people who've trusted me and allowed me to make them a pen. Um, the honor is always mine. And I, I always still giggle every time I make one and it screws together and it writes. It, it's, it, it's still just mesmerizing. Yep. So thank you to all your, your fans and, and folks that have bought pens from me. I sincerely appreciate it, and I, I look forward to doing this for quite a while longer. And real quick before we hang up, a little bit about Janice. You know, she's been kind of up and down with the health. Yes. So uh, I'll let her know later this week. I'll give her a buzz and let her know that we hung out a while. But uh, yeah, I'm concerned. Uh, she says she's doing better. She's getting stronger. Uh, she supposed to have surgery, back surgery done pretty soon. So uh, let's just, you know, pray that uh, she everything comes out right for her. She's a wonderful lady. I love her to death. Janice is just a great lady. She is. She's tremendous. And, and she's always, always been complimentary. Heck, she owns three or four of my pens already. Um, so, yeah, please send her my best. I, I wish well, her a speedy recovery. And Janice, if you're watching this, get better soon, please. Yep, we're praying for her. All right, my good friends. Take care. God bless. Have a great day, guys. Hey, enjoy Thanks. it, guys. It's been good.